So if you're thinking about 3D printing prop guards for your ProTech, or I guess any other quad for that matter, and you're wondering how you're gonna get the inserts or the standoffs out of the original prop guard and into the new one, here's what I'm doing, and I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step process. So I did this side, this fits good, I gave it a test run, it works good, so I might as well have a matching pair on left and right, and I think the white looks kind of fresh with the black up the middle. So we've got this one over here, and I'm gonna show you, I have another busted one over here. This is beyond repair, but all the hardware in it is pretty straightforward and easy to use. So I'm gonna melt it out with the soldering iron. I'm gonna clean it up with a popsicle stick, and then we're gonna drill out these holes just a little bit more so it's easier to insert it and it doesn't crack the plastic. All right, so Rocket Science 101, take your soldering iron, I got this thing cranked up to 450. I stick it right inside of the insert, as you can see, right on the top here. And it doesn't take very long. Now it's starting to get really hot. It's just gonna start melting through the plastic. I kind of turn into it. See if I can pull it out a little bit. I mean, I could pull straight through if I want to, but I want it to try and melt off as much of this as I can. Before I pull it out. All right, and that's kind of good. And while I'm here, and while it's hot, right, I'm just gonna try and use a popsicle stick, scrape off any of this excess plastic so the standoff can be as clean as possible. Woo! Don't melt the this. And that looks pretty good. So number one, nice and clean. So you can see here now, I mean, obviously this thing is cranking hot, but right, nice and clean. Two more to go. So this one's starting to melt out. Obviously the top closest to the tip is the hottest. So I'm trying to pull it out so I can get the least amount of plastic on it. Like that. And number two. And number two, nice and clean and done. Contestant number three, come on down. Okay. Come on. Work with me here. There we go. And last one. So all in all, right, less than 10 minutes of work right there just to melt these out and to clean them off with a popsicle stick. Super simple, straightforward, and easy. So step two is to insert these into the hole into your 3D print, okay? Now this is not gonna be pressed in, the plastic isn't molded around it, obviously. So the question is, is how big is this, right? So if I use my drill bit sit right here, right, this fits perfectly inside, and this is a 964. So hopefully you have a 964 drill bit, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that drill bit and I'm gonna try and hold this as flat as possible outside and I'm gonna run the drill bit in reverse, okay? So I just want the friction to kind of come through and open things up. If you run it in the normal direction and forward, it might grip the plastic and shrap and shatter this and crack it or whatever. So you're gonna run it in reverse, nice and slow. Let's go do that now. All right, so welcome to my high-tech outdoor work area, the garden. So remember, I'm running this in reverse, nice and slow. I'm gonna try and eyeball it and go straight down, but hopefully just the the hole itself will guide the drill bit itself too. Yeah, so one, done. And then you can take this little bit just to make sure it fits in there a little bit. We're gonna look at tapping it in here shortly, but obviously that's gonna be the perfect size and it's actually still snug. It's not just gonna drop right in, yeah? I think if you tried to tap this in without reaming out the hole a little bit, you would definitely crack this. This one in the middle is scary because there's not a whole lot of sidewall, so you gotta proceed with caution. Now we're gonna insert these into the print. 
So since this one is slightly elevated, I'm gonna try and find just a little corner of the wood here so that as I put it in and I tap it in, right? So I can work it in easily like this and it's still pretty snug. Hopefully nothing cracks, but we'll see. So it's almost all the way in. And I don't want to hit too hard because I don't want to mushroom the top and then be in a position where I can't even get the screw started because that would suck. And then the one in the middle, we got to get real creative on the corner over here on this wood. I mean, obviously you could be doing this on any type of medium. Ooh, that one's going in easy. So you can see over here, it's pretty much flush over all of these. There might be some small tolerance issues here, whereas this one at the top is perfectly flush on this side, but this side isn't over here, so maybe I lost a little bit during the print process, but I'm sure it'll still hold in there fine. This time actually went better than the other side. Nothing is cracked here, which is great. So now what you would wanna do is go and start a couple of screws in here first, right? Make sure the threads are all clear. There's no additional ABS or plastic or anything on the inside, and then you're ready to put it together on whatever your quad is. It's time for the moment of truth. I got this done. I think it looks kind of hot, right? We kind of got this black on white. Now we got more round ducts instead of that, I don't know what shape it was before, decahedron here. So does everything spin freely? Yes? No. Yes? <laughs> no, actually. So it did the same thing on this side. So maybe there's some tolerance issue with the rear one. And so what am I going to do? Well, I could just run the blades a little bit and kind of let it cut out what it is. And I might do that and like sacrifice a prop. Not enough drag for me to be concerned about burning out the motor. And it pretty much resolved itself uh, as just as soon as I started idling up. And it's really right here in this little outer corner right there. So uh, I could also come with it and hit it with like, you know, some 80 grit sandpaper. So maybe I'll take the prop off and sand it. Maybe I'll just turn the motors on and let it grind out that little bit of extra. But overall, I think this looks great. And obviously you could do this in any color that you want to. And then once you get this thing done, you start to see other things that you don't like, right? So I think this clear TPU that originally came with it looks kind of dirty and gross now. And so do the little pads on the bottom. So I'm probably going to end up now 3D printing. Probably I got a ton of this like aqua teal color right here. So I'll probably just do teal, teal, teal all the way around. And then it'll be kind of like a, a white and teal color with a little black and bottom, black top and bottom plate. Yeah. So I don't know. Hopefully that helped you out. Really, it's not that hard. It was actually a lot easier than some of the other things that I've ever had to do. So printing these out is cheaper, I guess, um, than buying a $15 pair that are uh, molded ABS. Will it be as strong? I don't know. Right now I'm using PLA. So, um, I mean, I guess I could use nylon or something like that if I wanted to. I don't own any nylon right now for my 3D printer, but we're going to run with this. We're going to see what happens. I don't plan on crashing anymore. So hopefully I won't have any more issues, but if not, I guess I'll just print off another set. So if you liked today's video, drop a comment below, hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, that's always helpful too. What is my channel about? Well, I like all sorts of different things. I like drones. I like FPV. I like regular drones. I like electric skateboarding, right? All this tech kind of stuff. And that's what my channel's about. So I'll hopefully see you in another video.